Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be drawing a convertible. I'm following my very own how to draw a convertible guide which I have linked in the description below. You can download it from my website for a dollar. It is a PDF download. There's 10 pages on it. If you'd like to get it for free, you can use the code at checkout, ZoomyBoy, that's boy with an I, and that code expires July 14th. 2021. I'm using Prismacolor pencils today for coloring, for sketching. I'm just using my mechanical pencil. It's from Moz Art, which I will link below, but you can use any pencil. That's fine. I'm using some erasers as well. I used a kneaded eraser at one point, some normal white erasers, and then the back eraser of my mechanical pencils. I will link those below. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Step number one on our guide is to draw a vertical line for the front left corner. Step two, we're going to draw a long diagonal line for the top right of the car body. Step three, draw a short diagonal line for the top left of the car body looks like a Y so far is what you should have on your page here. Step four, draw short vertical lines from each diagonal line for the front left corner and the back corner of the body. Now our Y should have like little legs on it. Step five, connect the bottoms of the lines of those new lines with the bottom of the first center line. So we're connecting the bottoms of those lines that we just drew to that front corner line. And that's giving us the size of our box that we're building for the body of our convertible. Step six is to draw a vertical line that's going to split that right trapezoid, the right side of our box, right in half. And it's going to extend out a bit too. It's going to go up a little further than our box sides are. Step seven, connect the top left corner of the top of your new vertical line, then connect the right. So I actually went backwards in the video. I did the right side then the left, but you're going to connect the left corner up to the top of that line you just drew and the right corner up to the top of the line you just drew. And you want these to be parallel to the tops of the box. Like the top sides of the box should all be parallel with each other. The same angle. So you don't want the back of this box to be up at a 45 degree angle and then the top of the box to be at like a 10 degree angle. You want them to be parallel. You want them to be like railroad tracks. Step eight is to draw a vertical line that divides your first and second vertical line in half. It's gonna continue up. Step nine is starting in the middle of that vertical line, you're gonna draw diagonal lines on the left and the right for the base of the car top. We're gonna draw short vertical lines from each diagonal line for the front left corner and the back corner of the body lines. From those, you're going to connect it to the top corner of our little box that's sitting on top. So draw diagonal lines starting at the top of the last vertical lines you drew and ending at the top of that first vertical line for our small box sitting on top of our big box. Step 13, you're gonna uh, draw a small vertical line sprouting a little bit to the left of the front corner line coming out of the top diagonal line. Then we will Draw diagonal lines starting at the sides, going to the top of the small sprouting line we just made. So just making the top of that box there. We're using that sprout line 
as a landmark for the back corner of our top little box. So our big box on the bottom is for the body of the car and the top box at the top is for the top of the car. You can erase some extra vertical lines here for step 15 and we'll go ahead and start blocking out the wheels. Step 16, draw a line starting at the middle of the front corner and going to the middle of the back corner. Step 17, draw the baseline under the car body. In the guide, I also draw a, another line above that center line, but I did not do that in the video, so it's an option. Step 18 is draw a front and back oval using the guides from the previous step to size them correctly. So in the guide I made my tires a little taller and in the video here I'm just making them shorter. I'm just having them go right to the middle of the side of the car here. So up to you. Step. 19 is you can erase those tire guidelines or line in this case. So just that baseline we're getting rid of. I'm just using a uh, mechanical pencil refill, uh, eraser refill for this. Step 20, draw lines coming from the top and bottom of the ovals for the length of the tires. I guess that'd be more like the width of the tires. We're turning these circles into a form. Going from a shape to a form by making it three dimensional. That's what we're doing here. So we've got the tops of our tires and the bottoms of our tires. Step 21, connect the top and bottom tire lines to each other with a curved line. And this curve is going to follow the same curve as our oval, so the curves will match. We're gonna go ahead and start blocking out the headlights next. So we've got our car blocked out, the car top blocked out, the wheels slash tires blocked out. So we're gonna go ahead and block out the headlights next. And we are on step 21. So draw squares coming from the front corners. And for step 23, once you're done with those squares, you're going to draw triangles behind those squares. They're gonna float up just a bit. So this is uh, the back of those pop-up lights that we're gonna put in this convertible. Just like the little Miatas have. Which brings us to our last step of page three. Step 24, draw an oval in the left light and a circle in the right light. As things get further away, they get a little bit skewed, a little bit smaller, so that's why the left, left one is an oval, the front one is a circle. Last step for blocking out the headlights is we're just going to draw small rectangles on the tops of each light. And then we're going to get to sketching. So we've blocked everything out which is our first steps. And now we're gonna go ahead and get to the sketching part of our drawing guide here. So we are on page four, and we are going to start with step 26 for sketching the hood. 
we're gonna draw a line for the left side of the windshield. Start at the left corner and make a slight curve towards the top. Step 27, split the side paint plane of the hood into three sections. The first and the third will be a little smaller than the middle. Add a hook in the first section for the top front of the window. It's step 28. Step 29 is draw a rounded corner in the middle section for the window frame. Step 30, split the last section in half using a sloped line for the back of the car top. 31, connect the top left of the top right to the top right with a slight curve line. So we've got the top of our car top. Very nice, the roof of the car. So there we go. And last thing for this sketch, like this sketch for the top, is to draw a rounded corner for the top left of the windshield. So it would be our right, but if you were sitting in the car, it would be the left. So basically we're just finishing up the windshield there. Step 33, extend the side midline from the step 16 to the front. So basically we're splitting the top of the car in half and we're going to start at where we split the side of the car in half. Step 34 is to draw a line for the bumper in the front, so just at the bottom there. Which brings us to step 35. Curve around the top portion of the bumper, then a smaller curve for the bottom portion of the bumper, then you can erase the corner box lines. So we're just rounding off this box and turning it into more of a bumper shape with some rounded edges. So now we'll go ahead and start the fenders. You're going to draw a very stretched out S that is going to begin um, on the side of the tire and then reach around and go up and around to the other side of the tire. And that is going to give us our fender. Once you have that fender drawn in there, you can go ahead and erase the guidelines and the sketch lines around and inside the fender and the wheel slash tire. Once you're happy with how that looks, you can go ahead and move on to step 40, which is essentially doing the same thing as step 39, only to the back tire. You'll draw an S-like line over the back fender for that. So it's just going to reach up and around, and then you can go ahead and erase the guidelines and the sketch lines around and inside the fender and the wheel, just like we did before. Okie dokie, so step 42 is to draw a curved corner line starting from the back corner of the car top, curving around the back bumper, and ending at the back wheel. And then you can erase those back sketch lines for the box. We're going to go ahead and work on some bumper details now. So you can start by drawing a um, oval for the reflector next to the front wheel and draw two ovals for the lights. So I went backwards in the video, I'm doing my two lights first and then I'm going to do the reflector after that. And now it is time to draw the grill. So the grill is gonna go underneath that middle line and it's an oval shape, but it has short flat sides. It's kind of a wonky oval or kind of like a rectangle type shape. Then you'll wanna draw a C line to separate the actual grill from its housing there. 
inside of that original uh, large oval. And now we are on step 47 and you're just going to draw a half oval under the bottom bumper for a vent. And we are done with the bumper details for our sketching. So we're going to do some miscellaneous sketching details now. And for those following along in the guide, we're on page 7 and we are on step 48. Next, I'm going to redraw the window lines with a slight curve to them. And for step 51, let's draw ovals in the tires for the hubcap. Okay, great. Um, so for the last step of page seven, we're going to draw the rear view mirror, or not the rear view mirror, just the side mirror. And it's just a squished oval for where the mirror is housed and a little rectangle coming down from it for how it is held in. And we're all done with the sketching part of this project. So you'll want to lighten your line. So just roll a kneaded eraser back and forth in your hands to make like a snake or worm type uh, form. And then you'll just roll it back and forth on your paper and it will just slightly lighten all of these lines. like so and what we'll do next is we're going to trace over the lightened lines with some nice clean lines um after you go through this whole um nice clean line work step this step 54 you can go back and then erase all the sketch lines underneath at that point and get it really nice and clean if you want. I didn't opt to do that, but you can do that if you want to. I'm just going to speed up through this part in the video. Okay, so once you're done with step 54, we're actually going to get started with our coloring. So step 55 is to use a dark red. I'm using a crimson lake red for my dark red. And we're going to put it for the following um, areas on the car. It's all mapped out in the guide. So it's the lower half of the mirror and the mirror shadow and the middle sections. Um, of the car side and you'll see I'll speed through this a little bit here and with that same color the crimson lake or the dark red we're going to go in to the front corner and the other sections that are marked out in the illustration on the guide. So we're going to add some dark here in the video um, around the grill towards the left of the bumper and around the corner. I'll speed this part up so you guys can see. Alrighty, so we're gonna set aside the dark red now and get out a medium red color. 
And this is gonna go on the top of the hood. So I'll be using a crimson red for my medium red. And we are going to do what it says to do in step 57, which is add medium red to the car hood, the bumper, and the middle of the mirror, and the middle of the car side. So again, I'll fast forward so you can see. And now we're going to fill in the rest of the car body with a light red, which is just pink. Specifically, I'm using seashell pink for my choice. And I'm just filling all this in. And this is all the shine of the car. This is a very nice, clean, shiny car. And the light is reflecting off of it. So it's really bright in all of these areas here. I will be using pale vermilion for my light orange in this step. So step 59 says to add light orange to the left of the headlights and to the front lights. And then we'll be adding orange to the reflector. And we'll be filling in the rest of the headlights with the yellow. Then we'll add a yellow overlay to the other headlights and a yellow center to our reflector. The specific color that I am using in this video is called Jasmine. I will be using 50% cool gray for our medium gray. And we will use this and add it to the middle of the headlight boxes and the bottom left and top right of the tires. And then also in step 61, we will be filling the vent with black. I am going to use a darker gray to um, complete step 62. It says to add dark gray to the front tire on the side bottom, next to the hubcap, and inside of the hubcap. We will add a dark gray to the back tire on the side and next to the hubcap. And I know that's a lot of directional directions, but on the guide that I've created, it points to each and every one of these sections and points out where it is in the instructions so you can follow along and it makes things a lot easier. Or of course, you're welcome just to watch the video, but I am going to speed it up here a little bit until we get to step 50, uh, 63. Okay, so for step 63, it says to fill in the rest of the wheels with a light gray. So we will be doing that. You are also welcome to go in to all those dark gray areas from step 62 and use a black colored pencil um, to darken them if you would like. That's what I've done in the video. And now I'm moving on to step 65, which is simply to color the car top tan. I'm using a yellow ochre for mine. So for the frame, that goes in between those windows. We are going to add, of course, red to match the body of our car. So first add that light red or the pink that we used before um, above the windshield and on the right side of the frame. And that's gonna be like a highlighted area. Then for step 67, you'll go back with that dark red, the crimson lake, and you'll just fill in the white gaps um, on that frame. Now it is time to work on the windshields. So we're going to add dark gray to the left side of the windshield 
and a medium gray to the right side of both of our windows. So our front windshield and our driver's side window are going to get medium gray on the right sides. And then we're going to fade those out towards the left side of the windows until they're white. So that's going to give a nice see-through glass color. That brings us to the last step in the PDF guide that's downloadable and it is to add medium gray to the locations quote unquote indicated below. So um, indicated on the video would make more sense for this voice over here. And yeah, basically what I'm doing is I'm adding a really dark, like a medium gray to blend together the dark and the light. So it's going in between the left side of the tire, just try to explain this verbally. Um, it's also going to go on the front bumper, uh, the front hubcap on the right side of it. And then on the interior of the hubcap for the back wheel as well. And that is the end of the guide. So at this point, you can be done with it. But what I really like to do with my colored pencils, and this is just like a rendering strategy that I enjoy, is I like to just really add a lot of a lot of layers. And as you continue to add layers and layers, so that would just be like going over your colors, it starts to look a lot more vibrant and bright and a lot of contrast. I will also, as you can see here, I use a white colored pencil to um, blend together the um, colors as well, which it's pretty hard to blend with um, a Crayola or like a student grade colored pencil, but if you get a professional grade pencil like a Faber-Castell or a Prismacolor like I'm using here, you can use a white color pencil and really blend them together. And you can actually even get a Prismacolor blender, um, which I use in the video as well. So I'm just gonna speed through the um, rendering portion of this. And that way you guys can kind of take a look and see what that, um, what my technique is like. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this and thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys next time have a good rest of your day